Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Hello, everyone. And thank you for coming to the channel. It seems like the British people kind of effed up over there. Because one outlet is saying one thing. Another outlet is saying this thing. And I'm like, where are we going? Left or right? Front or back? Which one? I mean, I was trying to do some more work. Some more little investigation work. Not much. Because, you know, I don't like doing shit like that. I like the stuff. The news to come to me. And I just put it out there. But anyway, we had one of my family members discerning eight. Hey, girl. How you doing? I hope this uh, Saturday early afternoon is being fruitful for you. Okay? You can see what I'm doing, right? <laughs> I'm on the tube. I'm on the tube trying to see who's here, who's here, who's here. But I got your message that, you know, um, the two sons and the dad had dinner. But I just couldn't find it as far as um, the London something, the London CNN. I tried to Google it that way. Then I tried to Google, Google it another way. The only thing I can come up with is the... Um, the independent.co.uk. So, because the other ones that were talking about something that happened in 2017, and the other one was, um, let's see, page six had the same thing that the uh, independent.co.uk uh, was reporting on. But really, it's not another here nor there. Now, we hope they did get it together and that, you know, they made peace and broke bread that night. You know, hopefully they did. Because surely, you ain't got to have no conversation when you eating food, especially when you hot fire mad. You want everybody to just stay quiet, okay? While you can sip down your wine or your espresso or whatever you got going on, and the meal that they prepare, they well, the, the staff prepare for you. Cause I know when bullshit going on, you either want to be way, way, way from it. But at that circumstance that they had to go through with the queen's death and all that, they had to be there with each other, okay? Well, at least they could go to different houses when they got finished congregating together and, and talking over specifics here and there. And, uh, you know, it just is what it is, okay? It just really is what it is. But um, just to do a follow-up, uh, let me see here. Where are we going with this? Where are we going with this? Hmm... Okay, my family member, discerning eight, she said, the, um, let me see. She said it was under the London CNN. The royal family had dinner together at Buckingham Palace on Tuesday after receiving the Queen's uh, coffin. A source ex uh, exclusive, uh, exclusively told CNN. Okay, so we don't know who the damn source is. They could be fooling us, y'all. They could be fooling us. They, they could be tearing up shit in that castle and we'll never know. You know what I'm saying? At the Balmoral Castle, they probably tore that shit up. Okay. They were probably throwing pictures and, and plates and knives. And but, you know, they cool. They shut shit down. You ain't going to get to know that information. And if you do, they're going to figure out who told. And then it's going to be a misunderstanding somewhere down the line. But anyway, um, she wrote, The Queen's Coffin was received at Buckingham Palace by the Queen, the Queen Consort, and the children and grandchildren of the Queen, including Prince William and Harry and their spouses. Okay? So... And they get that from um, told Sky News Tuesday, I guess. But I did find another article that really had touched on the same thing that I was talking about. Um, where am I at? Damn, I lost it that quick. Uh, it was the same thing they were expressing um, about they did actually show up and show it out and it broke bread. Uh, let me see here. Where are we going? We'll just get a little, a little bit, just a little bit now of independent news. Um, 
and see what see if they can give us a little bit more meat and potatoes that I could express to you all about the subject. And you know one thing that, that bothered me. Now over here in the states, okay, when we say a, a family member has died or whatnot, and you know their body will be flown this, there, and third, you know what I'm saying? How did they just say the queen coffin? Which made me realize maybe that queen ain't up in that coffin. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she hiding out somewhere. We don't know because these these people are very treacherous. They they can be very treacherous when you're trying to find out their business. You know what I'm saying? But I just found that was weird. They said Tuesday after receiving the queen's coffin, multiple outlets have reported. Okay, so I'm like, why they didn't say her body or you know something that makes us think somebody's in that coffin? But when you say coffin, I'm thinking that that shit is empty. But anyway, that's just my conspiracy mind going on. I don't pay no attention to it unless you're into it. Okay. Um, then it said Queen, uh, King Charles III and the Queen Corso attended the family meal along with the other children and grandchildren of the late Queen Elizabeth II. According to CNN, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex also joined members of the royal family, including the Prince and Princess of Wales, for the intimate sit-down dinner inside Buckingham Palace or Buckingham Palace in London. And they got that from page six. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, maybe they did have a good old time together talking about what Queen used to do, how she did it, and how she tickled them, you know, silly. And, and you know, just a good spirit going around now. You know, their grandmama, you know what I'm saying? And how they knew her each individually. And how she brought so much joy to their lives or this, that, and that. I don't know. But I just had to do that little follow-up story so we can put that to rest. Maybe something else come out. You know I'm going to update you here and there, okay, uh, whenever I can. But we'll just, you know, let me go. I, I had a video for y'all to watch. Let me see. Hold up. I took these pictures for something. See, I, you know, I, I got a lot of things on my mind today. I think I need to go take a nap, really, because um, I'm not on point with stuff like I like to be on point. But uh, let me see where it is. Uh, give me a little time, people. Give me a little time. You can't rush greatness. You can't rush greatness. Where is that thing? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. I just had that sucker. Let me see. Hold on. So, you know, I, I like to show and prove. I like to give y'all information uh, other than what I give you. Sometimes I go back and give you what I said. I said, and I ain't changing my story because this is what they told me. I have nothing but to believe that it is true, you know. But okay, we're gonna go to CNN. Okay, and they were saying, um, come on, commercial. It was saying that um, the Sussex joined Prince and Princess of Wales to greet well wishers. So I'm thinking, after they call themselves eating dinner, breaking bread, and all that stuff, and tearing up the house, the couch, I should say. Uh, they came out there and had to take photo ops to make sure everybody was on one accord. They were unified, you know, but some ass whooping got probably got, you know, going on in that castle and stuff. But I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, because, you know, ain't too far from it. Ain't no bad, too far fresh. Let's think about it. All heads are just, you know, going every kind of way. They blaming everybody for this, that, and the third. Can't you see something? Popping off right now. But they probably didn't put their hands on each other. But they probably was tearing up them plates. And the forks. And the spoons. And the knives. And anything they could get their hands on. And Charles probably was in there too. But anyway. Let's listen to the audio that we had from CNN about uh, the comings and goings. Which I'll see on the screen. Alright. Two grandsons. Uh, the late Queen Elizabeth along with their wives. And now the sons of King Charles III. They're at Windsor uh, Castle there. And uh, they are now looking over all of the beautiful flowers that have been left uh, for the memory of Queen Elizabeth uh, II just days now after her passing. Uh, and now you've got the uh, Prince and Princess of Wales, uh, William and Kate, along uh, with Prince Harry and the Duchess of um, uh, Meghan there. And they are now all looking through. Now, just earlier today, uh, you had the, the sons of Queen Elizabeth. Uh, and their children who were looking through the flowers uh, very intimately, uh, leaning over, reading the cards that have been left, um, even tearfully uh, reflecting on some of the beautiful notes that have been left uh, in memory of Queen Elizabeth. And 
all of this happening as we're also starting to learn more about the events that will take place over these 10 days of mourning um, where the Queen will lie in state on Wednesday. Uh, the family, of course, will be there and then the doors will be open for the masses, the public, uh, who will be there to line up uh, to see her lying in state. And now we also have officially a date of the funeral, which will be Monday, September 19th. Our Scott McLean is there at uh, the gates of Windsor. So Scott, what are you seeing there? Obviously we see in the background behind um, the, the barricades, huge crowds. And now they are seeing uh, the grandsons there, along with their wives, looking through the flowers and the cards. That's right, Frederica. I have to tell you, uh, when these four stepped out of their vehicle, this is not something that anyone had expected. We were told initially that there would be a visit. We assumed that the two working royals, uh, William and Kate, the mm -hmm. prince and princess of Wales now, would be here. Uh, we did not expect to see Harry and Meghan, and we certainly didn't expect to see the four of these together. Of course, there has been a well-publicized rift within the family between these two brothers. Of course, uh, Meghan, the Sussex, uh, and Harry, uh, her husband, they live in California now, and uh, they have made plenty of waves, and, you know, the plenty of people in this country believe that they've sort of been taking pot shots at the royal family from afar but when I've spoken to people here since the Queen's passing they believe that perhaps this moment perhaps the Queen's death could be a moment of reconciliation between the brothers that perhaps prompt some kind of a conversation now obviously they're together for a photo op right now looking through these cards and looking at the flowers that have been left for Queen Elizabeth uh, so it may just be a photo opportunity it may be something more the official residence, the UK residence of Harry and Meghan is Frogmore Cottage, which is on the grounds of the Windsor Castle estate. That's only about 600 yards or so from where um, from where Will and Kate, uh, the prince and princess, have just moved their family to. In fact, just earlier this week, on the same day that the Queen passed away, was their kids' first official day of school at their, their new school, only about 15 minutes or so from here. And as they're looking at these cards and at these flowers, Frederica, I have to tell you, I've, I've done the same. I've read through some of them, and uh, it's pretty remarkable. Some people have left full-page letters. A lot of people have left little notes attached to the bouquets that they've dropped. You've had children. Uh, many of them are clearly written by children. Some children have written pictures. Uh, one that stands out to me in particular is uh, someone had, had left uh, two full uh, cans of gin and tonic uh, in honor of the in honor of the Queen and most of them there seems to be a common theme in a lot of these notes that they're going through and reading right now and that is that they say thank you for your service thank you for your duty thank you uh, for your for carrying out your duties right until the end uh, the Queen was undeniably seen as a unifying figure in this country and many of these very personal very emotional cards and notes really reflect that as well. Of course, some also wish the new king well. I should also point out here, Frederica, that if you had any doubt at all about just how important and just how central the monarchy is to this country, this is a pretty good indication because this was not an announced or advertised event that you're seeing here. Uh, in fact, they had tried their hardest to say very little. Of course, there's some logistical things that come uh, with allowing the you know, this, the heir to the throne to come and mingle with the public. And so they had to set up these barricades about two hours ago. But beyond that, the people who've been waiting here had no idea who might actually be coming, uh, why they might be here, but they've waited around now for uh, quite some time, hoping for a glimpse. And as they sort of walk down the... Uh, the barricades here this is called the long walk this is just outside the cambridge gate of the of windsor castle and you can see that there are people i don't know maybe six or seven people deep just hoping to catch any kind of a glimpse of of the royals of course we saw king charles mingling with the crowd outside of buckingham palace yesterday we saw prince andrew prince edward mingling with the crowd uh, outside balmoral castle in scotland earlier today and obviously these four are the official residents of Windsor Castle, so it's not perhaps that surprising to them to see them here. 
Uh, earlier today, Max Foster mentioned this, Frederica. Uh, there was an official statement put out by Kensington Palace, um, written by the Prince William. And uh, I just want to read something that stood out to me uh, in this note. It said, I thank her on behalf of my generation for providing an example of service and dignity in public life that was from a different age, but always relevant to us all. And he goes on to promise that he will do whatever he can to honor her legacy by uh, trying to support his father, the king, in any way uh, that he can. Uh, we're just going to try to move down here, if we can, Frederica, to try to get a closer look. We've been put in this press pen for the moment, but if we can try to move down and see if we can get closer to try to hear. Uh, I think it's Harry and Meghan that are on this side of the barricade to try to hear anything that they might be saying. Of course, we haven't even gotten any official word on their move. Actually, let's just see if we can get the camera in close and let's see if we can hear anything. I'm just going to stop talking and put the microphone in if I can. All right, we're going to try and listen in, uh, Scott, real quick. Castle. They're interacting with the hundreds, seemingly, of people who are there um, to mourn the passing of Queen Elizabeth. It started out uh, by the two brothers, Harry and William, and their wives looking at the flowers and the cards that have been left, and now they're actually interacting with the public. And we want to listen in to see if we can actually hear some of that interaction. We had some audio there for a moment, but you could hear. I mean, oh, there we go. Uh, you can hear there's some laughter. I mean, there are lots of smiles there uh, that you can see in the crowd. You can see in uh, Kate there as well uh, and touching her heart. And clearly they were very moved by the flowers and the notes uh, that they just scanned right there at the gates. Our, our royal correspondent and anchor, Max Foster, also with us again, as well as historian uh, Kate Williams. So, Max, to you, this this was what we understand to be a very spontaneous event. At least none of us and the public didn't seem to know this was going to happen. But here we go uh, with the two grandsons there and their wives. Uh, this is pretty poignant. Not that spontaneous, but um, obviously <laughs> unannounced because of the security um, right. concerns here. What um, I was surprised about, if I'm honest, is seeing the Sussexes there too. I mean, this there have been so many seismic moments in terms of royal history uh, over the last couple of days, of course, but this is certainly one of them. Uh, if you imagine the big rift in the royal family between the Sussexes and the then Cambridges was utterly defining and damaging and hugely upsetting to the Queen. Uh, for us to see Meghan and Harry there unite, reunite with Kate and William is a huge moment um, and hopefully a sign of things to come and rifts being healed within the family. I mean, it's utterly preoccupied the family. Uh, there was tension between Harry and Meghan and Charles, but that was resolved, I think, largely around the Jubilee when they met up. But there was this o o ongoing tension between... Harry and, <clears throat> Harry and William, and we're seeing, I don't know if that's resolved, but it's resolved enough to the extent where they're able to come out and appear in public together. This is an absolutely huge moment. They're putting their differences behind them, and I think this will go down incredibly well with the public, because um, whatever anyone says about the royal family and who everyone's interested in, ultimately it's the Queen that everyone revered, and I think this will be seen as a hugely respectful thing to do for Her Majesty, the late Her Majesty. Um, and it was something, uh, something if she could see, I'm sure would be massively warming and heartwarming. They don't look right. Yeah, well, I should have booked her. Don't tell on Kaya. Okay. 
and that was it for that piece that they did unexpectedly um like i said they got ahead of the story they started making their own narrative and trying to put what they wanted out there in the public eye so far as we know they could have been tearing that like a tan that mansion down okay and the arguments were just overwhelming but then at the grand scheme of things they knew they had to come together and get that photo opportunity get get those faces out there that people are willing to see especially i really just don't know what the deal is they really are honing in on harry and megan you know it's like they're superstars and the rest of the family the royal family is behind them and they don't like that so who child i can't say for certain because i wouldn't dare but we just going on what the people had wrote down for us and then videotape that um yeah they did because i'm like hey he probably got the fight and they went on to mcdonald's somewhere <laughs> got them something to eat and came back for the big uh front they had to show so we, we really don't know what happened they could have went back to their own houses okay and said we'll meet y'all at 7 30 okay can you be here at 7 30 because I ain't sitting down with you. I'm not sitting down with you because you just disrespecting my wife, my church, and everything. Just because I don't want to stay over here in England anymore. I want to be in Hollywood. I'm going to go out to California. Y'all can come see me. I just don't want to do this anymore. I've done it when I was a little boy growing up. I'm tired, okay? I want to do something else with my life. Harry was saying, let me live. Let me live. That's what I was getting from him and Megan. But anyway, it's just like they're coming back home and everybody's just taking stock in what they're doing. You know, forget uh, Kate and William. Forget uh, King Charles, okay? They ain't, they ain't worried about all that. It's always been about the Queen and uh, Harry and Meghan, which is, you know, a, a piss poor way of looking at it. Because uh, definitely William has done his job in the little um, uh, job titles he had. And making it do what it do. And his wife was doing charity events and all this other stuff. So I can see them being very salty. That they have to live this royal life. Because this is what they felt they were born uh, to do. And then you got Harry over there being a little free, a free spirit. Because I really thought when they were growing up. William was going to be more like his mom. Outgoing, wanting to see the world. Just that and the third. But it seems like he's turned out to be more so like Charles. A cheater and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it seems like now, to me, Harry took more after his mom, Diana. And he's living his life. And he don't want no constraints with the royal family getting in his business. So he had to make it do what it do. And he took his behind on over there to California. And they doing their own thing. And they got their own projects they're working on. And like I said, William dad, I'm not William dad, uh, Harry's dad just don't want to be, he just don't want to be a part of that life. And he, he kind of the sons his son in a way that he let him know that he don't like that but if that's what he chooses well wishes uh go for it godspeed and all that kind of stuff and uh but he ain't trying to hear nothing he's talking about when he come home uh and want to sit and talk because i don't think they really had that talk i don't think if they did have it like i said they were bl busting up plates and eyes forks everything was being thrown in the air and people probably was uh Grabbing each other's necks and, and heads. And I, you know, I'm just saying. Because <laughs> we'll never know. We'll never know. But that's all I got for this story. And thank you, Discerning 8, for putting in your two cents. And uh, having me go chase up some more, uh, you know, uh, attachments to go with what I had already put out there for everybody to preview. And make their comments on. Hopefully I did you uh, do service. I did my due diligence. Uh, but that's all I got for this video, guys. Y'all have a happy, wonderful Saturday. And this is just not the first video you're going to get. You're going to get a slew of them here and there throughout the weekend, okay? For your enjoyment, pleasure. From your auntie, grandmama, uh, stepmama, mama, friend, cousin, however you look at me, okay? And auntie, I forgot that one. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.